Hi students, um, this is Miss Paulson coming to you with a virtual lesson that you can watch if I'm ever um, not available to teach for a day. And I'm going to be talking to you about classical styles, classical music in general. And this is going to go through the beginning of classical history and it's, it's going to go a little bit quick just so that we can fit in as much as we can in uh, the 15 minutes I'm allotted for what I'm using to record this. So, classical music, you can see from this picture kind of the typical idea you might have of it, which is like this kind of academic school music you might hear your older brothers and sisters play in orchestra, band, or choir. We're going to start with kind of the beginnings of classical music, which is medieval music. You can see just from the picture what period of time we're thinking about here. Um, most people back then did not read or write. They didn't read or write in English or any language, and they also did not read and write music. So a lot of music that did exist has been lost since it was never written down. It doesn't mean it didn't exist. Of course it existed, but people would just kind of make it up or sing it to each other, and it wouldn't really get written down all that often. The few people who did know how to write down um, both words and music, they tended to be priests, um, the people who worked in churches. So much of the music that we do have from that time is actually um, church music. I want to show you how different instruments looked back then. You can see they're not quite so shiny and fancy as the instruments we have, but that makes sense because any instruments had to be made by hand. There was no such thing as a factory, so you can see their drums, their string instruments, their wind instruments are very, very different from ours. Uh, moving on, uh, this is from a regular live recording. We'll see if it loads. Yeah, it should load. Good. And you're going to see these are people who um, are playing instruments from that time. So we're going to watch this. Please enjoy. Keep watching, but I want you to notice how the uh, medieval equivalent of the violin was not played on their shoulders or against their neck, but was betw played between their legs, almost like the cello is. Um, and this girl, she's playing a type of kind of record or flute type of thing. And you can see how there's two sides, but only her fingers really move on this side for the most part, because on this side here, it drones. It plays something where it's like, da it just holds that note whereas this hand gets to do all the fun stuff where she's going up and down and making melodies and from here we actually will need to head on I believe it will show up in just a second there we go. We are going to be talking now about the Baroque period. Um, the Baroque period comes after the Renaissance and the medieval times. Oops, sorry, my computer is doing too much. Let me make sure I didn't skip anything. There we go. Um, more people at this time are learning to read and write. And um, just the way people were writing down music was more clear. And because people could do that, 
they could make up music that was so much more complicated. And composers, that is people who write music, they began writing for bigger groups. So instead of just writing for like a group of two people or just one person, you could start writing for big groups of 20, 30 people. And this basically invented the orchestra. Um, we're going to listen to a piece of music, uh, of a Baroque piece of music um, by Bach. And your job is to show these hand signs. I will call them out and I'll be, I'm sitting here at my apartment and I'll be showing them where I am. So go ahead and do that where you are too. A. Now, listening to that, you might think, oh, that's very traditional, you know, kind of um, organized and plain. But I want you to know that word Baroque that you see up here, it literally translates to misshapen pearl. So it's supposed to be like something that's beautiful, but kind of misshapen and kind of weird. Even if you look at these letters here, you can see it's kind of random, like, oh, two A's, then a B, then a C, then an A, then a B. Oh, it's, it's kind of confusing. Whereas what comes next, after the Baroque period of music, we get something that's a lot more organized and a little more orderly called the classical period. Now you might be confused like, uh, Miss Paulson, I thought you already were talking about classical music. Wasn't this all classical? And you're right. Classical is used in two different ways and it's kind of confusing. Um, basically all the music we've been listening to is, yeah, it's classical. But there's also a different word, the classical period from 1730 to 1820, that is also a specific type of music. Think of powdered wigs, think of Mozart, and we'll, we'll actually be listening to some of his music in a second. I wanted to show you for also that in case you're confused about, wait, classical? Basically, classical music style is from 700 AD, that's like 1300 years ago or so, to now, so it's this huge amount of time. Whereas the classical period, that kind of powdered wigs and fanciness, that's only lasts about a hundred years or a little bit more than that, because I actually, I think this is supposed to be 17 or 1820, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, moving on, I wanna show you that this is the way classical art looked. Um, during this time, you see this is a lot like our White House and all of our buildings from back then. And that's because that was the music and the architecture that was going on. The classical period sound and also the art, it's very predictable. It's very organized. It's very refined. It's at an arm's length and it actually can be very emotionless because it just feels very fancy. Like, oh, you can't show any strong emotion. Um, we're going to be listening to a piece by this gentleman here. I know, what, a, what an interesting hairstyle. We don't dress like this anymore. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Now, uh, I want to let you know, I think as a music teacher, you might think Miss Paulson loves to listen to Mozart. But honestly, not. He's actually not one of my favorite composers. I find his music to be a little predictable and boring. But there is one piece of music I have loved since I was three years old that Mozart wrote. It's just so exciting to listen to. And even though it's predictable, if you look, here's the piece, very predictable. Look, A, A, B, B, C, C, 
A-A-B-B. -B. Very predictable. Even because even with that, it's really exciting and fun to listen to. So I will go ahead and play it and it's your job to listen to, the, um, to these and show the hand signs. I'll do it with you. Um, just so you know, the bees are the best part. That's the whole reason three-year-old me used to listen to this on my um, tapes. A. A. There's a couple of D's in here also. <laughs> That's all right. We're almost to this part. the end of our lesson for today just so you know there's way way more classical music I'm gonna be talking to you about um, and I didn't um, we only did basically the first half or so and we will do that in another lesson thank you for listening